Hello and welcome to Watch Releases Update for the week of October 27th until November the 3rd. We have a lot of watches to get to, so let's begin with Nomos and their new Tagante Rose Gold Neomatic. Nomos is a German brand that was founded in 1990 in an area called Glashut. Glashut is a legendary watchmaking area of Germany that is home to a lot of different watch brands. This year, the area is celebrating 175 years of watchmaking. To celebrate this occasion, Nomos is releasing new limited edition rose gold Tagante. This new rose gold version is actually sort of a re-release of a version that they had in the early 90s. It has so-called Lange dial and it's one of these sought after models. Well, now you can get your hands on a brand new one in a rose gold case. Tagante is a legendary line within Nomos brand. They have carried it since the initiation of the brand and usually these watches have hound wound movements. Well, this new rose gold version actually comes with an automatic movement, which is kind of rare for the Tagante model line. It's powered by the in-house DUS 3101, which is a super slim caliber, only 3.2 millimeters in height. It beats at 21,600 vibrations per hour, and it has 27 joules and 43 hours of power reserve. These movements are very beautiful to look at. They have a lot of decoration, blued screws, striping the whole nine yards. This new Tagante Rose Gold comes in a 35 millimeter case diameter. It's only 6.9 millimeters thick, and that's including a display sapphire case back incredibly thin and comfortable watches. Now, the difference between this one and the standard version are twofold. Number one, the rose gold case. This one is made out of rose gold. The standard one is made out of stainless steel. The second difference is, of course, this beautiful dial. As I referred to it before, it's called a Lange dial because it has this sort of two-tone finish. There is a ring around the dial and the sub-seconds dial are done in a different color from the rest of the dial and I think it looks gorgeous. This model is limited to 175 pieces and it's priced at 8,600 euros. So quite a bit more than the regular Tagante line. I think it's like four times more expensive. But because these watches are so collectible because of that Lange dial, I don't think Nomos will have trouble selling out this release. Zenith Chronomaster Sport Aaron Rodgers Edition. Aaron Rodgers is an NFL quarterback and has been an ambassador of Zenith watches since 2021, I believe. So for the last two, three years, most of his career, he played for Green Bay Packers, which have a green and gold color scheme. Not surprisingly, this new Zenith comes with the same color variation. And I think this green looks great on the watch. It comes with the ceramic green bezel and the green dial to match. You have some Arabic numerals on a the dial. There is a date between five and four o'clock position. Happy to say this date actually kind of blends in because the background of the date wheel matches the dial color perfectly. So this date doesn't really jump at you. The sub dials are executed with different shades of gray, which I think looks great in a combination with this green color. The watch still has a 41 millimeter case diameter. It's only 13.6 millimeters thick, 47 millimeters lock to lock distance. So it should fit on most wrists just fine. Still has 100 meters of water resistance and the case is still made out of stainless steel. The movement is really where Zenith shines. This one is still powered by the El Primero caliber 3600. It's an in-house automatic chronograph movement column wheel, high frequency movement, measuring one tenth of a second. It beats at 36,000 vibrations per hour. It has 60 hours of power reserve and it's made out of something like 200 or 250 individual parts. These movements are a work of art. This model will be limited to 250 pieces and it's priced at 12,800 US dollars. Most of the time, these limited editions, the collaborations between athletes and watch companies look like garbage. This one here, is a really good looking watch. In fact, I think Zenith should make this as part of their catalog. That's how good looking this watch is. The Certina DS Super PH 1000 meters. Certina is one of these super underrated brands. If you look at their Action Diver, it's one of the best value for money diver watches on the market right now. This company has a long history in watchmaking, including this model from 1970s called PH 1000 meters. At this point, the model from 1970s is very difficult to get. They're super collectible and of course, very expensive. Well, now Certina is releasing 
a new version, an updated version of this legend. It comes with two different dial colors. One is the orange one, that's a limited edition to 1000 pieces. The black dial version is just gonna be part of the standard catalog. Actually, between the two, I prefer the black version. I like the little orange accents and I think the overall design is very clean. 1000 meters of water resistance is super impressive but it's even more impressive if you look at the case dimensions. So the case is made out of stainless steel. It's only 43 and a half millimeters in diameter and it's just a hair over 14 millimeters thick. For a watch with 200 meters of water resistance, yes, that's pretty thick. But for a watch with 1000 meters of water resistance, that's actually super thin. I'm really impressed that they were able to get this watch to this size with 1000 meters of water resistance. But what's even more impressive to me is the price of this watch. 900 Swiss francs for the orange limited edition and 845 Swiss francs for the black dial version. That's it. I think the pricing is super fair. The specs that you get, uh, it comes with the Powermatic 80, which is a great movement. Of course, Certina is part of the ETA group, so they can get the ETA movements. I think this watch is amazing. They killed it. Well done, Certina. One of the best releases in the last few months. The new Breitling Avenger lineup. I love Breitling Avenger. In fact, I am currently wearing my Breitling Avenger. This was a gift. And to be honest with you, before I actually owned one, I wasn't that into these watches. I thought they looked okay, but I didn't really see the appeal. But after owning one, I can tell you it's one of my favorite watches to wear. So the new lineup has a new chronograph, a new GMT, and the new diver. Let's talk about the chronographs because I think they're the most exciting. There are four new versions in the standard stainless steel case. All four versions come in the same case. It's 44 millimeters in diameter by 15.2 millimeters in thickness and 53 millimeters lock to lock distance. 43 millimeter case diameter. Yeah, you need to have a bit of a larger wrist to pull off this watch. Out of the four different color variations, the creamy one, black one, blue one or green one. I think the green one is my favorite. I think that looks awesome. All of them are powered by the same movement, Breitling Caliber B01 automatic chronograph movement. These movements are great. They're COSC certified with a vertical clutch architecture. They have a beat rate of four Hertz and 70 hours of power reserve. The price is a bit expensive. The ones on the strap cost about $8,000 and the ones on the bracelet cost $8,250. On top of the stainless steel case chronographs, you also have two ceramic versions, which actually look even better. I think the black one is my favorite, but there's also the yellow dial one. Now these watches have exactly the same specs in terms of the case size, in terms of the movement but they come in ceramic cases, so they're a little bit more expensive at 9,000 US dollars. Besides the new Avenger chronographs, there are also a couple of new Avenger GMTs. Now these watches also come in 44 millimeter case, but they are slimmer at only 12 millimeters in thickness. They come with two different dial variations. There's the black one and the blue one. I prefer the blue one over black. I think that looks really sharp. Of course, they have sapphire crystals, 300 meters of water resistance, unidirectional GMT style bezels, and they're powered by the Breitling Caliber 32, which is actually an ETA 2893. So they have 42 hours of power reserve and they beat at 28,800 vibrations per hour. Now, because these movements are based on ETA movements, this is not a true flyer GMT. This is what's called an office GMT which is a bit disappointing, especially for the price. This GMT on the strap costs 5,250 US dollars and on a bracelet, it costs 5,500 US dollars. Quite expensive, especially for an office GMT. Lastly, let's talk about the three-hander Avengers, the diver watches. These ones come in a smaller case, 42 millimeters diameter by 12 millimeter case thickness. So it's almost the same as the watch that I currently have except for mine is a 43 millimeter case diameter. This one is slightly smaller. The other difference that I spotted between this one and the new version, that the new version comes in an all satin finish. Mine comes with a high polish finish on top of the legs. So this new one looks a little bit more utilitarian almost. It's available with three different dial colors. There's the black one, blue one, and the green one. I actually think that the green one looks the sharpest although the blue one of course looks great as well. These watches come with 300 meters of water resistance, unidirectional 120 click diver style bezels, and they're powered by the Breitling Caliber 17, which is a COSC certified modified ETA 2824 movement. It has 42 hours of power reserve, 
and it beats at 28,800 vibrations per hour. This version, just like the other versions, comes with the strap or the bracelet. The one on the strap costs 4,600 US dollars, and the one on the stainless steel bracelet costs 4,850 US dollars. Out of this whole release, my favorite are the chronograph versions. I think the GMT and the divers don't offer as much value for money, especially with these movements. They're modified ETA movements and the GMT is not even a true GMT and it is still quite expensive. Breitling is working on their own in-house movement. So if I was in the market for one of these Avengers, I'd probably wait for their in-house movement to come out. The Bell & Ross BR-03-92 Diver Terra in Blue Ceramic. Bell & Ross is a French watch company. It's a watch company that I personally don't often talk about. They have a very distinct design language. Square cases, big instrument-like dials. Of course, they have rich history with aviation and diving. This time, they partnered up with Terra Ocean, which from my understanding is an organization that studies oceans and studies different environmental challenges that oceans face. Then they share their findings with the rest of scientific community for free. A great cause. Bell & Ross partnered up with Terra Ocean to release this limited edition diver watch in a blue ceramic case. I think the watch looks very sharp. It still has that iconic Bell & Ross design language. I like the color combination of blue and orange. Not a huge fan of this date between four and five o'clock position. At least it blends in somewhat okay because the background of the date wheel matches the color of the dial. The watch comes with 300 meters of water resistance. It's housed within a 42 millimeter square ceramic case. Now you have to try these watches on because square cases wear very differently from round cases. From my experience, they usually wear larger. It's powered by the Caliber 302 automatic movement, which is essentially a modified Celita SW300 that has 38 hours of power reserve and it beats at 28,800 vibrations per hour. This model is limited to 999 pieces and it's priced at 5,600 US dollars. So very similar price to the Breitling and even has a very similar movement. Just like the Breitling, I think it's a little bit too expensive. I wish it was about a thousand dollars less. If this was 4,600 US dollars, I think that would be a much better price. But of course, us as consumers, we always want things to be a bit cheaper. The Casio G-Shock and a Bathing Ape limited release collaboration. Almost every other week, there is some sort of new limited release G-Shock. They love to collaborate with different brands, but I think this year was especially saturated because the brand celebrates their 40th anniversary. Bathing Ape or Bape is a fashion brand from Japan. I have no idea what this brand is, but apparently it's pretty big and they have collaborated with G-Shock in the past. In fact, this brand turns 30 this year. So you have G-Shock that turns 40, you have Bape or the Bathing Ape that turns uh, 30. Perfect time to release a new watch. This is essentially an iconic G-Shock 6900 with a different paint scheme. I mean, we've seen this song and dance a few times already. A new G-Shock comes, a new limited release, a new collaboration. It's essentially the same watch with different paint colors. I mean, that's how you really make a lot of money from watch collecting community. This watch features a lot of gold accents. It also comes with two different straps. There is the green camo strap and your regular raisin strap. The green camo is supposed to be a throwback to their original release, I believe. Uh, there's no many other changes to the watch from the standard edition. Yes, it comes in slightly different packages, but in terms of the functions of the watch, in terms of the display, in terms of the case construction, it's your standard G-Shock 6900. Now, the only difference between this and the standard, other than the new color scheme, the new strap, and the new packaging, is the price. I was surprised to learn that this one costs 350 US dollars. That's so much money. It's almost double the price of the Ed Sheeran Hodinkee G-Shock and that one is exactly the same version, the G-Shock 6900. So I think this one is too expensive, but hey, it has a following. I guess this brand has a following. G-Shock themselves have a large and very passionate collector community. So I'm sure G-Shock and Bathing Ape will do fine with this release. And that's it. Those were the releases for this week. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss more videos like this in the future. And leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what releases stood out to you. Let me know what releases disappointed you. I always enjoy reading your comments. Thanks for watching this video and we'll see you next time.
Bye.